Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Waves from SlideNerd here. In this video, we are going to talk about how to create an SQLite database schema. Now what is the word schema? It collectively means the tables, their structure, the data types for each of those columns involved, the aggregate functions if any, triggers if any, and so on. So first, let's talk about how we create a schema programmatically. Now there is no option to create databases using UI tools unless you use some third-party tool and hence it is important that you know how to create a database programmatically. Step 1. Define the schema. This includes specifying the database name, the version, the table name and the column names that you have. Now of course there can be more than one tables and of course there are several columns out there. Step 2. Create the database. Here you're gonna write query that is the create table statement over here. Step 3. Execute the queries. Now this can be done from your app or from a separate class called the adapter where you will perform methods like insert, update, delete and query that do these operations out there. So let's go to step 1 and try to figure out how we can work with the schema and then in the upcoming videos we'll talk about the second and the third steps in a lot more detail. Step 1. Define the schema. So let's say I have a simple database that I want to create. Now this is wivsdatabase.db which is the format you have for an SQLite database file on your mobile device. And then what I have is a table inside which is called Wivs table. It has two columns underscore id and name. This underscore id is the primary key which means it identifies a row of the Wivs table uniquely. Now this is an integer and it automatically increments without you guys having to worry about its value. Now probably you're saying that I could have named something like ID over here. Why have you set underscore ID? In Android, it is a convention to keep primary keys with underscore ID for different tables. Even when you work with content providers, you're going to be observing this pattern a lot. So I suggest we stick to the default pattern that Android suggests. So here what I'm going to do is create some different strings. For example, I'm going to say string database name is wivsdatabase.db or Wivs database. You can specify the extension if you want, otherwise you can omit it, no problems. It will work either way. Then I will specify the table name by saying string table name is Wivs table. Then the UID which is going to be underscore ID, the first column. What I'm trying to do is for each column, I'm trying to create a string that contains the name of the column. The same way I created a string here that contains the name of our table. And why would I do this? This is the question that you have, right? We will see why we are going to need these values inside separate strings out here because we are going to later access them inside our queries. It's for example, when you say select star from Viv's table, at that time you're probably going to need that, right? Then there's a string name that contains this second column name over here. And at this point, you create another integer database version is 1. Now we will see why this database version should exist and what happens with it in the upcoming video when we actually work this schema out in Eclipse. So at this point go ahead and make them private static final because these are constant fields inside your Android app. For Java syntax you remember if you have a constant you make it private static final. Now private is of course by choice and static final is what makes something as constant which means it is a class level variable and it does not change its value. So now let's talk about the SQLite open helper class. Create a subclass of the SQLite open helper and implement the method on create and on upgrade. Now we will talk about what these two methods are and how you should exactly override them. So first question is what is SQLite open helper? SQLite open helper is a class that takes care of opening the database if it exists creating it if it does not exist and upgrading it when you perform some changes to the table structure like maybe you added some columns or maybe you removed some existing columns or you changed the data type of some column and so on and so forth. So here I have a class Wivs helper that extends SQLite open helper. As soon as I do this what I'm supposed to do is declare a constructor that takes a context object. Now what I have is a super class constructor being called with four parameters. The context, the name of the database, the third argument is a custom cursor object if you plan to create your own cursor. 
but since we are not doing that we'll pass null over here and the fourth option is the database version now if you guys remember we already created these two variables in our previous slide where I said database name is something and database version equals to something right so this constructor is a must if you do not have this super keyword over here with this four parameters passing then your Eclipse is gonna give an error saying you require to override that constructor so then we have the on create method that gets called we'll take a look at exactly when this on create is called and what happens and then there's the on upgrade method that gets called so let's talk about these things in a little more detail and try to find out what works so at this point what I have is something like this so on create is called when the database is created for the first time creation of the tables and the initial data inside the tables if any should be put inside the on create method so in other words you're gonna write the create table statement inside the on create method of your SQLite open helper and then there's the on upgrade method that gets called when the database needs to be upgraded which means you performed some changes to the structure of the database you can drop tables add tables or do anything else that you need to move to the new database schema that you have now if you add new columns you can use the alter table statement to do that and if you rename or remove columns again you can use the alter table to rename the old table and you can also transfer data inside the on upgrade method from your old table to the new table and add existing null values or something for the newly created columns that you have provided they support a nullable value so enough talk about this let's see how this works so there you go to our same database we have SQLite database class as you guys noticed this is the class that you guys have been seeing in the last two slides and I did not tell you what it is about SQLite database is a class or an object you can say that's gonna represent this database that you just created and using that object you're gonna perform queries like insert update delete and query to check out what you have with the database now database names must be unique within an app not across all applications for example you have this method execute SQL that belongs to this class SQLite database which takes a string SQL statement what it's gonna do is execute a single SQL statement that is not a select statement or any other SQLite statement the, re the reason is this as you guys notice here it says public void execute SQL that means even if this method runs it's not gonna return anything because there is a void over here and that is why it does not work with those kind of SQL statements that return a value like select or maybe insert that specifies that rows were successfully inserted or not multiple statements separated by semicolons are not supported hence you can have only a single statement inside the double quotes for a string and of course if the SQL statement is invalid it's gonna throw an SQL exception so first let's talk about how this actually works if you guys remember we extended the class SQLite open helper and we call that class as Vivs helper so the first question that we have is what is this Vivs helper class gonna do here is what you're gonna do inside your main activity maybe where you wanna use this you're gonna create an object of this Vivs helper and then you're gonna create call the method get writable database on that Vivs helper object and that is gonna give you an object of SQLite database which we just discussed in other words this SQLite database object is gonna represent this database you have here on the right hand side and you're gonna use that object to perform the different queries that you wanna do which we'll be talking about in our upcoming videos for now let's talk about how we use our on create method that we just discussed while talking about the SQLite open helper so there's the on upgrade and then there is the on create as you guys notice it takes an argument of type SQLite database DB so here we are gonna say create table with table underscore ID integer primary key auto increment which specifies that the first column is an integer it will be our primary key and its value will be auto incremented without we having to worry about it and then there's of course the name which is a second column whose data type is where care with 255 characters that is the maximum number of characters that you can put inside this column so here's something I need to tell you right now we are not talking about SQL so far hopefully I'll be talking about SQL in one of my upcoming videos as well and there we can cover exactly what these statements do and how they work 
So then I'll say db.executeSQL. Now notice the SQLite database db is the object I'm using over here to execute my query. And I'm also using the execute SQL method which I just discussed. It returns a void, remember? Which means you cannot have a select or something. But here we are just creating a table and hence I'm saying, saying db.executeSQL. Now this might throw an exception and hence you gotta handle the SQL exception E. And based on the cat statement's response, you can probably print some kind of message to the user indicating that something went wrong inside the application. So now let's talk about the on upgrade method and this is all we need to discuss as far as the schema is concerned. So previously we talked about the on create which I've just put dot 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 over here to represent that it contains certain code because I couldn't put everything at one place. Then inside the on upgrade method, this method is called when something changes inside your database structure. So here what I can say is database db which is this SQLite database object that represents my current database. I'm gonna say db.execute SQL drop table if exists webs table. In other words, I'm actually deleting the table called webs table. Now it is your call what you wanna do here. You can probably alter the table if you want, add some columns or something or you can probably back them up to some kind of secondary database or cloud storage and that is completely your choice what you want to do over here in my case which is a simple case I'm just deleting the table and again what I'm doing is after the table has been deleted the new database is being created by calling on create once again because this on create at this point is expected to contain the new statements that we have and there we'll see exactly how things work now remember at this point if things look a little tricky about this exactly what is going on and how things are working don't worry too much about it we'll jump to Eclipse we will make this simple app and try to understand exactly how databases work and how this on create and when this on upgrade methods are triggered in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video let, your, let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you guys in the next video where we talk about how to make the schema in Eclipse. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.